Hi guys, welcome back to Irish Footy Vlogs. Welcome back to the show. We're going to talk about the Premier Division games uh, that went ahead last week and look forward to some of the European games as well and kind of look back at the European games, do that in kind of one go as such. So we'll talk about the European ties of the four clubs that are in Europe uh, and how I think they might do this week as well. Three of them are home, of course, on Thursday and Shamrock Rovers in the Champions League qualifier there in Iceland on Tuesday. So we'll get into those as well. The FAI Cup predictions will be in a different show. I have them in a first division show. Um, I take 12 minutes 50. We're talking about the first division up to 12 minutes 50. And after that, it's the FAI Cup. So keep an eye on that as well. This video is going to be out before it anyway. So in the Premier Division, we had three games. We had two games on Friday. I was at Talca Park. Match day vlog for that one. Shelburne won. Bohemians won. And ultimately, good game. Good derby this one. Really good old-fashioned derby. A lot of bite, a lot of commitment in it, which was something that was lacking, I think, in the last one uh, at Dalyman Park when it was nil-nil, to be honest. Good atmosphere as well from both sets of fans too. And, you know, it was nil-nil at half time, And I thought Shelburne generally were the better side in this game in the first half. They controlled most of the game. Had an awful lot of possession, about 66% possession in the first half. Both seemed happy enough to let them have possession um, but you weren't getting much from the Bowes midfield. Shelburne midfield were keeping things ticking over. Bowes midfield weren't really in the game, weren't really getting on the ball. Um, and often it was long balls to Afalabi from a Bowes point of view. They, they looked a bit dangerous, Bowes, in the first five minutes. Cairns looked a bit iffy, actually, and picked up an injury as well, and that might have something to do with it in the first couple of minutes of the game. But Shelburne came back into it and, and started to um, to very dangerous in set pieces, actually, corner kicks and free kicks and stuff like that, and um, they had one or two opportunities. But they did control that half, but it was nil-nil at half time into the second half, and um, Jack Moylan scores reasonably early, 11 minutes in the second half and 56 minutes um, after Shelburne had put good, good pressure, really, on Bowes in that early um, stage of the second half, and... They had one or two little opportunities, but the shot came in and, and Talbot, I can't remember who took the shot actually, but Talbot, simple enough save really, you would think, but bats it out to Moylan, who's on his own, and the ball's defence up react, and Moylan finishes nicely um, to give Shells a one the lead, and he enjoyed that in front of the Bowls fans as well. Um, looks like Jack Moylan might be leaving though, I think I mentioned that in the vlog, he could be on his way to Lincoln, so be interested to see if he's available for the Cup game this week. But um, he was really good in the game throughout. You can see his extra bit of class compared to most on the pitch on the day. Touches and always willing to try and take on players. And when you have a player like that, sometimes they lose the ball. But they're the percentages you play. Um, when you're a player like Jack Moylan. And Shelburne got what they deserved. They were 1-0 up at the time. After that, though, there was a bit of a lull, actually, to be honest, after that in the game. There was a bit of a lull. And Bowles slowly but surely started to come back into the game. Quick subs from Devine to react to the goal. James Clark came on for Rank Donnell, uh, who wasn't really in the game. And McDade came off for Coote. And McDade worked hard in the game, but again, wasn't really in the match, to be honest with you. And they made a bit of a difference. They gave Bowles a bit of an impetus, I think. Coote kind of took up the left-hand side, really. Clark was in the middle, basically, but trying to join the attack. And they did give them a bit of freshness there, to be fair. Um... Bart Kuka Lovzik came on for Bowles as well to make his debut at right back. They moved Buckley into midfield and uh, Flores went back to left back at one point as well. And Bowles started coming into the game. It was coupled kind of with the fact that Shelburne opted to go three at the back as well and and go with two wing backs as well. Harry Wood came on later as well. And uh, from Holland, he looked knacker, to be honest with you. He looked... Um, Every time he got on the ball, he wasn't making the right decisions. His passing was poor. Off the ball, he was poor. He looked like he couldn't run, to be honest with you. So he looks a mile off fitness. Either that or he's lazy. I'm not sure. But um, I would say his fitness, to be fair, though. Um, and it wasn't really until Shane Farrell came on with only a couple of minutes to go that they looked like they had an outlet in the counter-attack because they, Moylan had gone off and uh, Hikiki had gone off for Shelburne as well. And they... Um, not just the three at the back, they looked like the Sean Boyd up front in the zone, basically, pretty much. Uh, and he was expected to do the running in behind. Like, they had no one to really, 
you know, even the hip poles of the counter attack if they wanted to sit deep, in which they don't. And they invited pressure on the balls as well. Balls improved their changes, but also Shelburne invited balls on. And you just felt it's inevitable balls are going to score. And they did. Afalabi with a, a smart finish on 80 minutes. Luke Byrne won't be happy for Shelburne, I don't think, though. Um, to be fair, he's been good all season, but he won't be happy with that. And balls again score in the last 10 minutes. They've scored more goals in the last 10 minutes than any other side in the league, so... Balls would be happy to pick up the point in the circumstances. Shelburne would be disappointed because it was an opportunity for them to push. Uh, there wouldn't have been a point behind Bowles that they won the game. As it is, they're four points behind Bowles. So that would have been interesting from a Shelburne point of view, I suppose. But Bowles would be happy enough to, to come out with a point at the end. So let me know what you think in the comments if you're a Shelburne Bowles fan, if you're at the game or not, what you thought about it. Big result for Drotter then, knowing that Sligo and Cork were playing the next day to go to UCD and win 3-1. Now, I did think Drotter would win this, but I didn't think it'd be as convincing because I thought all the pressure would be on them in many ways. UCD have been awful lately, let's be real about it. And, um, you know, Drotter were comfortably 3-0 up before Bishop scores a, a decent goal for UCD in 83 minutes. And it's a massive win for Drotter because they're on 28 points. We get into the Sligan Cork in a minute, but they're five points at the Cork now in the table. And, uh, just a, just a big, big win for them. Ryan Brennan gave them the lead, and he's missed some chances in recent weeks, Weeks Brennan, but this was a very smart finish. It was a clean finish, wasn't it? Foley, good ball into the box, a lovely little flick at the near post from Brennan, 1-0. Connor Keeley scores his first goal from the club on 26, which is a bit of a surprise because he's a lad who's a defender's capable of scoring goals, and he scored quite a few goals in Ballymena, for example. He scored his first goal in 26 minutes, and 2-0. The game is wrapped up by then. UCD just don't have the belief now or the confidence. Adam Foley has really been among the goals lately, then wrapped it up in 72 minutes to give Drotter a 3 0 lead. And as mentioned earlier, Bishop scores a late goal in 83 to give UCD a goal. UCD now, in, uh, it's difficult to talk about them because, um, you know, they've brought in Sean Brennan, obviously from Drotter and that kind of thing. Um, but bottom of the table, nine points, Cork 23. They're a long way off, and I think that's what's happened in recent weeks as well. The whole belief is just drained out of them now, and you can understand why. You can understand why it's very difficult. I'm sure Miner's trying to get to play, get them to play without any pressure. Um, but at the same time, you know when you know you're that far behind, it, it is difficult. Let's be real, uh, very very difficult. And you know, Drada brought in Wade Slater, who people might know of him from Bowes, um, another mead man at Drada as well from Dunshockland. But he, he's come in and obviously Kyle Robinson has returned to the club as well. So to give them more power up front. And for Drada, after losing Draper, you know, to have Foley fish and scoring goals is being, has been a godsend for them, really. Massive for Drada to get that win and uh, just gives them that buffer over Cork and keeps them in touch with Sligo Rovers as well. So massive win for Drada. Um. And I'm sure Kevin Doherty would have talked about the fact that something had to give the next day when Sligo took on Cork. And we get into that and we finish Sligo Rovers 3, Cork City nil, Matt and 30, 11 goal this season. Lovely header, good play by Caelan Barlow. Uh, Branifak on 53 minutes. And Radoslavich again uh, after scoring a couple of weeks ago on the balls uh, and 73 minutes 3 nil. And Sligo, the weather was rough here. It was rough a few weeks ago when they played balls and they won it. So, um. I think Sligo will want the weather to be rough for the showgrounds every time they play, but a massive, massive win for them in every way in terms of the scoreline and the table because it really does. It puts some six points above Cork and a um, massive, massive win for Sligo. And, of course, they brought in a Portuguese striker Moreno as well, so we interested to see how he does. Massive win, and they'd be delighted with that performance. In recent weeks, they've got a couple of wins, haven't they, under their belt and an arrow defeat, so massive for them. Cork will be disappointed, but... It's hard to talk about Cork too much considering what happened. Rory Keaton's father as well. And I believe they only found out at half time that his father had been killed in a car accident and Rory Keaton came off. Um, it was one nil half time Sligo as well. I can't see the Cork City players' heads were, were in it either. So look, the very difficult situation and it's very difficult to comment on Cork City's performance as a result as well. But, you know, as I said in the other video, that will be out after this, to be honest, when we're talking about the cup games, condolences go out to to Rory and, and his family, of course, and very difficult to to find the shock of finding that out half time pretty much in a football game as well. You can't really put words into that. 
Um, from Sligo's point of view, they will be delighted with the three points. Absolutely delighted with the three points. A massive three points for them. And um, and they're scoring goals again. They haven't been scoring goals. So six goals the last two home games. Massive for Sligo. Um, it's something that they've been struggling to do. So, yeah, they'll be delighted with that. The bit of red and, you know, they're in a decent position now on the table compared to where they were a couple of weeks ago when you're probably more worried really worried about them. Um I suppose now we'll get on to the games. Um I'll, I'll reference the games like Shamrock Rovers first of all in the Champions League were obviously beaten one 0 by Bread of Lack. I done a vlog on that so a lot of my comments are in that uh, in the review of that game or in the review in that vlog. And um overall I think I was disappointed with the first leg performances and results uh from the League of Ireland teams. No wins um, yet they can all go through in the second leg. But I thought Rovers quickly were very disappointed in Hunter Bredevac. Um, very disappointing. You know, they've been pressed well in the first half, but they didn't really change that until the second half. Did no outlet in the counter attack. Obviously, Farouja and Clark being out was a massive blow for them. Massive blow for them because it gave them no there's no pace in the wing back position. They'd no, you know, agility, let's say. And you just wonder, um, Finn and Kavanaugh really like for like, particularly in those European games, like at times you really need to counter. You need to counter. And Rovers just couldn't do it. And when they had a chance to counter, it was just they couldn't do it. They didn't have the pace to do it in the game. Byrne and O'Neill playing midfield didn't look fit enough to me. Um I just wonder at times should Bradley change one or two things. If you're missing your two top wing backs and you know, the two other lads, you know, especially in Europe, haven't got the pace and the energy to get up and down the way you need to, maybe you need to change it a bit. So I, I was disappointed with Rovers in that sense. I'm probably a little bit disappointed in Bradley as such as well. Uh, I know he's missing Liam Burt as well and players that might give you a bit of zest as well. I understand that, but it was disappointing. It was very flat. I think they're capable of beating Brett of Black. As for the second leg, can they beat them? They have to get the first goal. Um, I don't think Farouz will be back or Clark will be back. So, you know, Bradley doesn't really change what he does in Europe. And I think he needs to do something to try and change it tactically. So I'll be interested to see if he does that. He has to do something. Um, you know what I mean? Whether it's a chain, a tweak in tactics. You can't play wingers really because they don't have wingers as such. Arguably, you could put Kenny out there maybe and say, you know, get him forward. But I don't think he's going to deviate too much from his, his system. So I'd like to say Rovers will go through. But even though... They get the first goal over there in Iceland and it's game on. Just sense they won't do enough. I, I just don't think they'll do enough. Um, I don't see how Byrne and O'Neill could be an awful lot fitter a week later. Um, they could be worse, really, because Byrne has been injured and O'Neill has been injured. Who knows? Um, but they'll probably play anyway. And when you've got two players that aren't really fit enough in midfield, you're carrying them a little bit. So, um, and Brett of Lack look good in mid, they're decent midfield. They move the ball around well, so... They might get a draw out of the game, Rovers. I go for one all, but unfortunately, I think they might go out. Um, next up, St. Patrick's Athletic away to Dujalon in the first leg, obviously, the Conference League, and they were beaten 2 1. They got away with one here. Very simple, they got away with one. No away goals, but still, um, that goal by, late goal by Mark Doyle after a good play from Lonergan um, kept them in the tie. And maybe the fact that they were outplayed in the whole match and probably should have been three or four down, they'll know they got away with one would spur them on at Richmond Park because Digilon decent, but Pats were awful on the day. And when Chris Forrester doesn't play well, and I don't think that's fair really, because I feel like that he has to play well. Um Pats really struggle. A few curious decisions on the day, I think, as well. Uh, I think um, I was talking about the counter attack and rovers and that kind of thing. Um but I think Pats really should have started uh, Curtis and Breslin. They looked better when Curtis went to the right back slot. Uh, I would have been personally tempted to go three at the back for that game and get Curtis and Breslin's wing backs and give you a real outlet. Um, I don't like Pats playing Curtis as centre back really because he's he's good at centre back. By the way, don't get me wrong, but he's excellent at right back and or right wing back. And when he doesn't play there, who plays there? It's usually Brock Bank, who just isn't good enough to be fair. Um. Interestingly, he played Norman's centre-back as well as first-ever start as well to play in the European game. 
which was strange in my opinion as well and possibly the wrong call and um, probably the wrong call um, but overall, even apart from all that kind of stuff, Pats just didn't perform at all in the night. And they were, I'm sure they'll be up for, for the second leg. Richmond will be behind them. I'll be there to vlog the match. Richmond will really get behind them. I think it's a reduced capacity, of course. But I'd be a little bit more confident that Pats going through than Rovers, to be honest. Probably because Pats are home and they really got away with it over in Dujalange. And they probably want a point to prove. Uh, to be fair to Daly as well, he said, as he says... Uh, they know more about them as well. They didn't know, know an awful lot about Dujalange going into the game. I think Dujalange knew a bit about Pats, though. So be interesting to see how Pats approach the game. But in, in they just have to play better. Um, talk about tactics and different things like that. They just have to perform better. Um, I think they might. Will they go through? I think this could go all the way. I think Pats might win at 1-0 and end up winning on penalties. Derry City, Torshavn. Um... Nil nil away in the first leg. Yeah, it's not a bad result. Um, I expected them to pit, pinch a win, if I'm honest with you. And in the second half, they completely dominated, really, and should have got the win. The chances, McGonagall will be disappointed he didn't put one of two or three chances away. Duffy had a couple of shots, a couple of opportunities um, where they were in good areas and that kind of thing. Um, as such, should be pleased with the result. But again, if Tarshavin scored the brand well, they go one nil up, let's say. And the same will apply for Dundalk, who we'll talk about in a minute. Uh, now, you have to score two goals as such. You know what I mean? Okay, one can get you the penalties, blah, blah, blah. I know that. But in in reality, you need to get two. So, uh, And Torshavn did have chances in the first half. They look like a team that could nick a goal. So um, Derry's home form isn't great, let's be honest about it. How much of an advantage is it really playing at home? You'd like to think it would be. Um. But Duffy's back, obviously, and it's another game under his belt. McElhenney, the same. Uh, you still have Patch in there, so they're strong. They're strong. Um, I think Higgins would be a little disappointed they didn't nick a win over there, if I'm honest with you. Um, I know I was as well. Um, the performance was probably slightly better than what Pats and Rovers put on, to be fair. It wasn't as bad as their performances. But... Hopefully they can kick on and win now. I have a bad feeling though. I'm going to talk about Dundalk in a minute that one of Derry or Dundalk will get caught as in, you know, they let in the first goal and they might struggle then if they do that. I'm just not sure which team. I think Oriel generally seems to be a bigger advantage for Dundalk than the Bradley well is for Derry. Um, I don't know. I think this could be tight. I have a bad feeling Derry might lose this one 1-0, one but I hope I'm wrong. I hope I'm wrong. Dundalk then against Magpies. Uh, in my opinion, they have the easiest of the four ties. Uh, I think, I know it was hot over there. It was over 30 degrees. I still think they should have been looking to come away with a win over in, in Gibraltar, to be honest with you. Um, of course, Louis Ainsley plays for uh, Dundalk, who's part of the Gibraltar national side. Um, but no damage done as such, I suppose. And Really at Oriel, and Dundalk are strong at Oriel, and I, I do feel like their team do have a home advantage, let's say. um, And I think they might make a count in this one. I think if they score reasonably early, they might get a couple. I think they might win this one 2-0. You know, you've got Huben there, get some crosses into the box, and um, Magpies will struggle against him. And, you know, again, it's vital they don't concede the first goal, like Derry as well. Um, Vital they don't concede the first goal, so it puts them under pressure. But I do think the home advantage for Dundalk is more beneficial than the home advantage for 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 Derry City, I think, to be honest. And uh, I think Dundalk might go through. So I think two will go through. I think Dundalk Pats will go through, just about. Um, I think Derry might be caught, unfortunately. And I think Rovers might find it difficult to turn it around, as I said there. So guys, let me know what you think in the comments. Let me know what you thought about the games of the weekend, the Sligo. Uh, the games of Sligo Drogheda, or sorry, at Sligo UCD were home, and uh, and uh, Talkabark Shelburne, and the European ties. Who do you think will go through? Were you disappointed in totality with the results and the performances of the Irish clubs in Europe last week? Um, they all have a chance of going through. That's the only good thing. Who do you think is more likely to go through and less likely to go through? Um, I can't see them all going out, and I can't see them all going through, though. That's the thing as well. Um. Yeah, so let me know in the comments. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, please hit your subscribe button. Like the video if you like the content. Uh, have a good evening. See you later.